In this chapter, we're going to start looking at jQuery. So what is jQuery? Well, the short answer is jQuery is JavaScript. But more detailed, jQuery is a fast, small, feature-rich JavaScript library. Now, what does that mean? It's a library. It means that often in JavaScript, we're doing the same things over and over. And we end up going and writing the same pieces of code over and over. Uh, JavaScript makes that easy and it puts a lot of common things into this library so that you don't have to recreate them every time you want to run uh, a certain thing in JavaScript. The other thing to know um, is that jQuery is coded and tested for cross-browser compatibility. Now it's not as big a deal today when I'm recording this in 2023 but if you go back to like 2015, uh, JavaScript support between browsers was way different. All, all browsers implemented JavaScript slightly differently. Uh, so you could write some code that worked well in Chrome and then you run it in Internet Explorer and it doesn't work or run it in Firefox and it works differently than you expected. Um, so that was one of the big benefits back then is that uh, jQuery was written so that it worked in every browser so it was consistent across all browsers and that was a big deal it's not as big a deal today however um, like 74 percent of the top 10 million websites still use jQuery so while you can do more things uh, in today's versions of JavaScript uh, and the, it'll work cross-platform on all the browsers just fine People are still using jQuery, and, and there's there's good reasons for it. Um, so some of the things that have been added to JavaScript that we've been using all along is like the query selector or query selector all. Uh, we've been using that usually with the dollar function. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but those query selectors are compliant with CSS3, and back in 2015 that wasn't the case so javascript had support for current versions of css um, that didn't exist back then so there was a lot of really really good reasons to use it um, so what does it do it makes things like html document transversal manipulation event handling it has animation uh, and things for uh, building methods for ajax uh, which we'll talk be talking about in a later chapter um, it makes it much simpler uh, with an easy to use API that works across a whole bunch of browsers. Um, in addition to jQuery, now if you look at these buttons up here on their website at jQuery.com, um, there's also jQuery user interface and jQuery user interface provides a whole bunch of commonly used widgets like uh, checkbox radio buttons, accordion uh, tools if you, if you click on things and the accordion expands out uh, date pickers dialog boxes progress bars sliders spinners tabs and tool tips a lot of those things that we take for granted uh, somebody had to write those in javascript and rather than you having to write uh, the code for a slider every time you want to use a slider you can go to one of the jQuery's libraries from the jQuery user interface uh, and just use their built-in methods for doing sliders so you can use their slider object and you don't have to recreate it from scratch every time you want to do something like that um, they also have versions for mobile uh, it's a uh, jquery mobile is made to it's html5 uh, to do responsive applications that can work from everything on a mobile phone on up what else do they have oh that's their that's jerry jquery's uh, github i think um and i am not familiar with javascript oh javascript testing framework so if you're in a, an environment where you're doing lots of coding in your organization and you're doing automatic testing uh, javascript has tools for that um, but we're going to stick to basic job uh jquery um and, and the things that we learn in this will apply to those other things eventually. And the documentation available at their website is incredible. So if you go through here, it's long. 
but just about anything you want to do or if you're not sure how something works you can come here and look at their API documentation and you can see it it's all here if you uh, if you want to know how jQuery.getJSON works you can go here and click and it shows you sample code and instructions on how to use those different parts of the tools um, so while we won't cover everything in jQuery it would be impossible for us to do that in this course um, there is documentation there so if you know the basics of it you can use your documentations to to add new features that you might want to add so we'll come back to the jQuery website in a little bit and talk about how to get jQuery um, so I've already shown you their website so what does jQuery offer dozens of selectors different ways to get elements off your web page dozens of methods once we get those selectors what methods can we do um, and event methods that make it much easier to write uh, events that happen on your page click events and things like that jQuery makes it easier um, so it's a lightweight compressed library that loads quickly so it doesn't degrade performance and I would add in there much um, obviously you have to download the library every time somebody requests a page that has uh, jQuery on it it needs to have the jQuery li library downloaded in the browser. Um, so that's another piece of JavaScript that we have to add on our web page, and we'll see that in the next uh, upcoming video. Um, it offers cross-browser compatibility and selectors that are compliant with CSS3. So let's take a look at just briefly uh, an application that's written in JavaScript and then the same version of the application but written with jQuery and you can see how it's a little bit cleaner easier to read uh, so let's look at this we have JavaScript for FAQs applications similar to what we've seen before it's not exactly the same but if we take a look at it we have uh, our use strict declaration uh, our document uh, DOM content loaded event handler so this is where we're going to uh, make the magic happen once our page is loaded and what are we doing here we're going to do a document query selector all we're going to get all the h2s that are in an in the id called faq so we're going to get all those then we have a section here that does a for loop it's going to go loop through all of the h2s on our page and attach an event listener a click event listener um, that toggles the class minus uh, so we've seen that before where we click on the minus or plus sign and it toggles that section open uh, open or closed um, and then it looks at the h2 looks to see if the next element sibling class list uh, we're going to change that class list for the next element sibling which would be the paragraph that comes underneath the heading uh, we're going to toggle it to open and then we're going to call event prevent default um, and then we set the focus on the first h2 first child uh, which would be the first uh, probably the first link there we're going to give it the focus when the page loads all right so this is what we already know how to do this is how we've done it in javascript or very similar to what we've done in javascript now let's take a look at the version written with jquery so you can see just me for me going back and forth long you can see longer lines shorter lines um, DOM content loaded. Look how long that line is. In jQuery, we could do something like select the document. We're using the dollar uh, selector, the dollar function. When the document's ready, well, that's a lot shorter and easy to write. Document.ready versus document.eventListener, uh, DOM content loaded, and then the anonymous function de declaration. So you can see document.ready is a lot easier to write. We're going to attach an event handler for all the h2 tags so we're going to go to the faq section and get all the h2s and we're going to make a click handler uh, and the event is going to get attached to whichever uh, object so evt is whichever object gets clicked uh, we're going to get the current target and we're going to toggle that class uh, the minus class and the open class that we did before and event pre prevent default now what's missing here what didn't we have to do we're getting all the h2s 
and attaching these events to all the H2s, but we're not doing a loop. If you look at the old code, we had to run a loop to do each one one at a time. In jQuery, we can just get all of them and say, hey, attach this event to all these things. Okay. Even the code down here, h2.toggle class. And over here, we had to do h2.classList.toggle.minus. Um, a little it's, it's shorter and easier to read easier to write so that's some of the events to jQuery now I'm not expecting from this video for you to understand every little bit about how that works we're going to talk about all these different things in upcoming videos in the next video we're going to see how to include jQuery on your website